Hello and welcome back. Here we are with our 4.7 notes, systems of nonlinear equations. So we are going to be graphing and solving algebraically systems that involve quadratics um, as well as some linear functions. So it says, how do we, um, how do I solve a system with nonlinear functions? So the possible cases for these systems is that we could have a system with a linear equation and a quadratic. So that is a line and a parabola. And if we graph that, think about what could happen with a line and a parabola on the same graph. They could not intersect at all. They could intersect one time or they could intersect two times. And so those are our possible cases for solutions. We could have no solutions, one solution or two solutions. If we have two quadratics, So if you imagine two parabolas on the graph, then obviously they could never touch. They could touch at one point, they could touch at two points, or they could be the same graph. So it could actually have infinite solutions. So those are our cases um, for systems with linear and quadratic or just two quadratics. So we could have no solutions, one solution, two solutions, and then or infinite solutions with the two parabolas. So let's go ahead and start by solving these systems by graphing. So what I want to do is I want to graph this first one, which is a quadratic in green, and then I want to graph this second one, which is a linear equation in that lavender color. So the lavender one, the linear, is going to be very easy to graph. So that has a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of negative 2. So here is my line for that equation. And then I need to graph the quadratic. The quadratic is given to me in standard form, so I need to convert it into vertex form so that it's easier to graph. So because that b value is even, I'm going to go ahead and use completing the square. So plus something, and then my minus 1 plus that same something. So half of b squared is a positive 1, so this now factors into x minus 1 squared, and then plus 0 because negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So this means my vertex is at 1, 0, and the a value is 1. So right 1, up 1, left 1, up 1, right 2, up 4, left 2, up 4. And so then there is my parabola. And we can see that on this graph, this linear and quadratic never intersect, never touch. So that means no solutions for this system. Going to the next system, I'm going to graph this first one um, in pink. And then I'll graph the second one in a blue color. And both of these are quadratics. And both of them are actually in vertex form, which makes my life so much easier. So I can go ahead and start graphing. So for the first one, my vertex is at 1, 1. And my a value is a positive 1 half. So that should be enough to get started. And then in my second graph, I have a, also the vertex at 1, 1. And this time the a value is negative 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8. And so then that quadratic looks something like this. And I can easily see now that this has just one solution right here. They're sharing that vertex, one solution, and it is at that 1, 1. Okay, so that's my graphing. And then, of course, we can solve algebraically. So when we solve systems with just linear equations, we could have used graphing, substitution, elimination. Um, we're still kind of doing the same thing here algebraically. Uh, we can obviously solve by graphing. That's what we just did. Substitution, oops, um, or elimination. You're not really going to see elimination happen a lot um, because if I give you a quadratic and a linear or two quadratics, you have... Um, like of like three different variables instead of just two so it'd be a little bit harder to use elimination but um, we are going to use substitution in two kind of different um, like uh, ways I guess you could say so 
The first way that we can use substitution is literally just solving one equation for a variable and substituting it to the other equation and solving. But the other way that we can use substitution and that we use most often with two quadratics is we set them both equal to y and then we set those equal to each other and solve um, and combine it into just one quadratic and solve it. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about here in this first example. So what I like to do um, is I like to kind of just look and see what's given to me. So in this first example, I have two quadratics. So substitution is not going to be the easiest choice for me because like I said, I do have those three variables. Obviously, elimination just won't work. So what I'm going to use is substitution, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in standard form, solving it for y. So if I add my y over and then add the 2 over, that will give me 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. And then if I solve this second one for y, I also get y equals negative x squared minus 2x and then plus 0. So I don't have to write that. So what I can do now is I can set these two equations equal to each other because they're both equal to y. So I can say 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals negative x squared minus 2x. And then I could set this equal to 0 and solve by either factoring, um, I could solve by square root, I could solve by completing the square, I could solve by quadratic formula. I have all these tools to use to solve a quadratic depending on what it looks like. So if I make this equal to zero, I end up getting 3x squared plus 3, oh, uh, minus 3, excuse me, minus 3x plus 2 equals zero. Well, I noticed that this is doesn't have a GCF. Definitely don't want to complete the square because it's going to give me some odd numbers. Um, factoring, factors of 6, I add up to negative 3. Mm, don't think that's going to work, so I'm going to go to quadratic formula. So quadratic formula would be x equals, or in this case, we're solving for y. The opposite of b plus or minus my b value squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a, which is that. So then I'm looking at my discriminant to see what that's going to give me. 9 minus uh, 4 times 3 times 2 would be 24. 9 minus 24 is a negative number. So this is really going to be 3 plus or minus the square root of a negative 15 over 6. I'm stopping right here. My discriminant is negative. That means I get two imaginary solutions. So this is no real solutions. Think about your answer to a system. It's where these graphs are intersecting or touching. If it's an imaginary number, it's physically not happening. Um, it's happening in this other dimension that we can't even graph. So this is going to be no real solutions. All right, let's try it again with the second one. The second one we do have y equals negative x squared plus 4 and then y equals 4x plus 4. So because they're both already set equal to y, I'm going to go ahead and use that substitution again where I'm just setting those two things equal to each other. So a negative x squared plus 4 is equaling a 4x plus 8. And so then again, like I said, setting that equal to 0, I want to make my x squared positive, so I'm going to add it to the other side. So that means x squared plus 4x subtracting the 4 gives me a positive 4 here. And then I'm looking at this and I see that that is a perfect square trinomial, which factors into x plus 2 squared. Take the square root. So x is negative 2. So if I'm getting one value of x, then that means I should be getting one value of y. Remember, this is the answer to a system is a point. It is a location on my graph. So I don't just stop here and say x is negative 2. I need to also find what that value of y is. It's a coordinate location. So when x is negative 2, I actually get y to be 0. And I could plug that in here or here, whichever you think is easier. Um, I would probably do the second one. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. And so then that means I have one solution at negative 2 comma 0. Okay. Let's try it again down here. So x minus y is equal to negative 4. And then I have y is equal to x squared plus x minus 1. So again, I'm going to use some type of substitution. I'm actually going to solve this first one for y. And then that way, like I said, I can just substitute. So 
um, I get y is equal to x plus 4. And so then that means x plus 4 is equal to x squared plus x minus 1. Making that equal to 0, this gets me x squared and then a minus 5. So then that means 5 is equal to x squared, which means x is equal to a positive root 5 and x is equal to a negative root 5. So this tells me I have two values of x, so I'm gonna ha I need two values of y. So I'm gonna use the easiest one, and that's this one right here. So if I plug in x as a square root of five, I get this square root of five plus four. So here's one solution. And if I plug in x as a negative root five, then I get y to be, um, you could do 4 minus root 5, and that's actually how you should probably write the other one as well, but it doesn't really matter. 4 plus root 5. And there you go. So that means we had two solutions for this. Um, that was a linear and a quadratic. Two solutions. All right. The next one easily set up for us. They're both equal to y, so I'm gonna go ahead and set them equal to each other. So a 3x squared minus 4x minus one equals a 2x squared minus x plus nine. So I'm gonna set that equal to zero. So subtracting the 2x squared, I get 1x squared. Adding the x, I get a negative 3x. Subtracting the nine, I get a negative 10 equals zero. This is factorable. The factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 3 are going to be a negative 5 and a positive 2. So then that means x is equal to 5 and x is equal to negative 2, which again means I have two values of x, so I need two values of y, which means I have two solutions. So I need to plug in x into either, I'm sorry, I need to plug in 5 into either one of my equations in the original problem and solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this second one here. So 2 times 5 squared minus 5 plus 9. So 5 squared is 25. 2 times 25 is 50 minus 5 plus 9. So 45 plus 9 is going to be a 54. So that's one solution. And then I also need to plug in the x value of um, negative 2. So negative 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, negative and negative is plus, and then plus the 9, so that's actually 19. And so then when x is negative 2, y is 19, so these are my two solutions for the system of two quadratics. Okay. And then we have one more. So for this one, let's see, what color do I want to go? I'll go this way. So this one I have 2x squared plus 4x minus y equals negative 2, which is a quadratic, and then x squared plus y is equal to 2, which is another quadratic. So I'm actually going to do, I'm going to solve the second one for y and do a like a plug-in type of substitution. So if I solve this for y, that's getting me a negative x squared plus 2. And so I'm going to plug it into the y here. And so then I get 2x squared plus 4x, distributing that negative as a positive x squared minus 2 equals negative 2. Combining like terms, <laughs> those two cancel out, GCF of x. So that means x is 0 and x is a negative 4 thirds. And so when I plug in 0 for the x value, I get a y value of 2. 0 squared is 0, negative 0 plus 2 is still 2. So this means when x is 0, y is 2. So that's one solution. And then I have x is a negative 4 third. So I need to plug that in. So if I plug it in here, that would be y equals negative negative 4 thirds squared plus 2. So that would be a negative positive 16 over 9 plus 2. So a negative 16 over 9 plus 18 over 9, which would be a 2 over 9. So then that means y is 2 over 9. And that's my other solution. Okay? Not too difficult. And then, of course, we have a word problem. 
So for this one, our word problem says the area of a rectangle is 120 inches squared and the perimeter is 46 inches. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. So I like, I'm a visual person, I'm gonna draw myself my rectangle. We don't know the length or the width. Actually, I'm gonna call this the length and then this the width. It really doesn't matter here. What I do know is the area is 120 inches squared. Well, how do we find area? Length times width. And then the perimeter is 46. Well, how do we find perimeter? Yes, we add up all the side lengths, but I know that opposite sides are equal in a rectangle. So this is actually 2L plus 2W is equal to 46. And so here's my system. So I need to solve this system to find the dimensions of this rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use substitution with the first equation. I'm going to solve this for either one of my variables. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and solve for um, L. So I'll have L is equal to 120 divided by W. And so then I'll substitute that into the second equation. So now everything is in terms of W. So if I multiply this, this is going to give me 240 over W plus 2W equals 46. Um, multiply everything by W to get rid of that fraction gives me 240 plus 2W squared equals 46W. Rearranging this into a quadratic, this is 2W squared minus 46W plus 240 equals 0. Everything is divisible by 2. And I have a good feeling about this. Factors of 120 that add up to a negative 23. I think this is factorable. So I'm going to come over here and kind of make my um, factor tree or whatever you want to call it. Um, 5 would be 24. Yes. 6 would be 20, 7, no, 8 would be 15, yeah, and then 10 and 12, and then it would kind of go backwards. So then I think which one of these um, could give me a 23 or a negative 23, and that is going to be the 8 and 15, sweet. So that means I need a minus 8 and a minus 15. So that means, oops. so those are my two quote unquote answers. Now, the way that we solve this, it says the width is either 8 or the width is 15, right? Well, how do we know which is which? Well, let's say I use the width as 8. If I plug that back in, that means the length would be 15. Or if I say the width is 15, then that means the length would be 8. So it doesn't really matter here because um, the way that we set up our system and solved, it doesn't matter if you say the width is 8 inches and the length is 15 inches. Or if you say the width is 15 inches and the length is 8 inches. Unless the problem specifically stated the length is longer than the width or the width is wider than the length or whatever, but it doesn't say any of that information. So we just know that the dimensions of the rectangle are 8 and 15 inches. It doesn't matter which one is which here. And there you have it. Systems of nonlinear equations.